welcome to the Happy and Hangout Hour. I'm your host, Mike Terosian, and uh, today, February 1st, wow, first day of February, got a little white stuff coming down, and, uh, it, it, you know, just perfect time, and just happened to have the man that we can talk about snow. It's our own DPW director, John Westling. Hey, John. Good afternoon, Mike, and good afternoon, residents of Hopkinton. The timing was perfect. We've perfect. got a blizzard coming in, and uh, we scheduled this, so... This is this is outstanding, and it, you know, a lot of people don't know what it takes to keep these roads clear for a storm, before and after, and what have you. But they just are custom of the nice, clean roads. So today, I just want to give a little insight on what does it take to get these roads clean. You know, it. And it's not that, oh, the snow's coming down, let's call and wake everybody up and go out. There's a little bit more to it than that, right? Yes, that's a, a wonderful question, Mike. We have, uh, for, we're fortunate to have a very dedicated crew here. The, the snow removal operations, those are all managed by our highway manager, Mike Manser. And uh, he lays out the plan for attack of the storm. And then we've got all of our highway and water and sewer employees. This is an all hands on deck operation for us. So those folks are again, dedicated to making sure that the roads here in Hopkinton are safe for travel, that commuters can get to and from work uh, and that folks can get around as they need to and get home safely to their families. So the planning starts with making sure that all of the equipment is ready to hit the roads, that the salt spreaders are operational, that the plows fit the trucks and they're ready to go on. Uh, also making sure that we have plenty of salt in our salt shed. Uh, last week we had, just on Friday, we had 15 trailer dump loads of salt that were delivered. Wow. If you, if you wow. follow us on our Twitter page, you'll see a great photo of our loader pushing all of the salt up into the salt barn. Um, and then it's a matter of being prepared and watching the forecast. We watch every one of the news stations. We also have uh, Precision Weather, which, which gives us a forecast for just Hopkinton, Hopkinton Centralized. But as any New Englanders know, uh, the forecast isn't worth the paper it's written on. It can change yeah. based, on, uh, based on the way that the wind is blowing. Oh, that's a great photo. There you go, based that's on, the Twitter feed, yes. Yeah, based on the storm fronts, the highs and the low pressure areas. Uh, so it's really, we've got to be flexible and nimble to be able to, to move depending upon what the storm brings. Uh, the guys came in at 5.30 this morning because there was a little light dusting of snow on the road. So the guys came in and they spread the salt to make sure that, you know, that would melt. And the snow wouldn't stick to the road. So uh, right now there's not too much accumulation on the roads. I was just coming in. The roads are starting to get a little greasy, um, yep. but we're, we're ready. We're ready to go. Right, it's 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 nice, and it's always a team effort. And it, it, it was funny, and I've had many years, as I've told you before, how I used to do the plowing as a contractor for the town, and did that for twenty three wonderful years. And it, it, it's funny how everyone becomes a weatherman. You know, they're all predicted. You know, we knew about the storm coming last week, and everybody watches it, sees the curves. Thank goodness for uh, our own local weatherman Eric Carty, uh, yeah. who helps out. Uh, gives us the real technical numbers, but it's also a team effort with your uh, other public safety officials. The police who are out on the road all the time, they give you a nice little early warning if uh, you know they get the you know the call for an MVA or or they on their patrol they notice a, a slick spot or or the white stuff coming down. You know they'll they'll give you a heads up. So it's 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 a whole team effort, which is awesome. Yeah, it is a team effort, Mike. And uh, you had mentioned Eric Cardi. It's important to remember that even though we've got snow falling, it's an all hands on deck for plowing, but Eric and his crews, they still have to manage the water system and the sewer system to make sure that those are fully functional, plowing those out uh, during and after the storm. So it's really a team effort all the way around. Right. Not and, just and, EPW, but other departments as well. And, and God forbid, you know, that the worst thing that could happen during a snowstorm, which I can't remember too many during an actual storm is is a, any kind of water main or service break. We've been we've been lucky on those accounts. I think. Knock on wood. We've yes. been very fortunate. Yes, I tell you, the, it's the it's the worst trying to do those things in the winter, and I, I know I've done that for many years. Okay, so now 
the white stuff is coming. Uh, everyone knows about the packing ban, which uh, went into effect uh, November 15th. And we have uh, no packing on the roads after 1 a.m. And uh, or else you get towed or ticketed or both. Uh, hopefully just the ticket, but usually the, the police are very good. They, if there is a, a complaint, they try to find the owner to get them, get that car off the road. They're not just eagerly to call the tow truck, you know? Yeah, that's right. Our, our goal isn't to uh, earn revenue from writing tickets or uh, making people have to go and, and pay the tow company and go get their car. Our goal is to make sure that the roads are safe and clear of all snow. So our plows like to go from curb to curb. If there's a car in the way, we've got to plow around it. That car can also incur damage by just a, just someone who's driving down the road. They hit a slick spot and you know they slide into the car. So it's really wise to keep your cars out of the roads during the winter and especially during snowstorms. Sure. And one, one thing that I want you to uh, talk about a little bit too, because it always drove me crazy as a uh, as clear of the roads, is it is illegal, and I like to use that word illegal, to send snow out into the roadway from your sidewalk, from your driveway, whether you're, it's a plow, or snow blow, or shovel. Is that correct? Well, it's in, it's in our bylaws that you can't put snow into the roadway, uh, and that's for several reasons. I mean, one, if you're, if you're snow blowing and your snow blower is blowing snow into the road and a car comes along, you could obscure their windshield. They can't see where they're going. They get in an accident. There could be stones in that. You could hit someone. You could hit someone's car. Uh, but more importantly, if we've cleared the roads and they are nice and clean and down to the down to the pavement, now you're blowing snow into the road. We've got to go back out. That's more cost to us. It causes uh, potentially, you know, that that can create a slick spot for a car coming down the road to hit. Uh, so it's, it's not a good idea, and it's also against the bylaws, as you mentioned, for right. to put snow into the road. And the reason why I like to mention, number one, it's all clean. Two, you, you mentioned the words, the salters, we don't, the, the salt spreaders. We don't sand anymore, which is great. Uh, as a motorcycle rider, I appreciate that. <laughs> and, you know, same thing with, you know, people just blowing stuff out of the roads, like when they do the mowing their lawns and they send the clippings out there. You know, that's bad for people on bicycles. It's bad for your pedestrians. It's bad for you know, uh, people on motorcycles, it's, it just makes things, the road slick and it, it's, a, it's a hazard. So keep everything in. I mean, the, a lot of the, the uh, driveway plows, they do a pretty good job. They'll push stuff out, but then they clean it up. You know, that's okay. You're, you're fine with that, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal is to keep the snow out of the roads. If, if it's a temporary thing where they're, they're just maneuvering to clear the driveway and then they clear it out of the way, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, if I can just touch on what you mentioned a second ago, that we no longer spread sand. Uh, a few years back, we looked at that uh, as an option for the community. And what we found was uh, that it was going to be in our benefit to do that for several reasons. One, like you said, it helps in the springtime. There's no sand in the roads for cyclists and motorcyclists. Um, but we don't have to pay to purchase the sand. We don't have to pay in the spring to sweep up the sand and clean it out of the catch basins. And it really doesn't provide that much more grit for motorists. It's, it's a temporary thing and it's really right when it goes down, but its effect wears off very quickly. So it was a huge saving for the community, not having to buy it, not having to sweep it, not having to dispose of it, not having to clean it out of the catch basins. And we're putting down just the same amount of salt on the road, so we're still getting that snow melt effect. It, which which is awesome and, and like you said it it's funny because you knew the marathon was coming when you saw the street sweepers out at the common you know you knew it was hey we're getting ready for marathon time the snow must be over because the sweepers were out and now we don't see the sweepers anymore which which is fine by me i tell you because it what a difference it makes when you know march rolls in and you guys are doing your regular maintenance cleaning up the sidewalks and everything what a difference the cleanup is. It, it must go so much faster. Yeah, you mentioned the fact, Mike, that you don't see the sweepers out there. We're actually out there. We have to sweep all the roads. We, we sweep all the roads once in the spring, but it's a yep. lot quicker process because that, there's no that's, sand. Right, so that's what I up. you don't see because you, you would see them downtown for a couple of days. Now yeah. they do it in a day. It's, yeah. it, and it's probably usually like the morning and then they've gone to a different part of town. Right. 
Right. So it's it's a it's a great improvement for us. That's outstanding. All right. So now here we are. It is two ten, and the snow's coming. People, uh, well, I think it's Grove Street. I think it has trash pickup tomorrow. What's going on with the trash? Great that you mentioned that. And again, if you look at our Twitter page, a tweet went out earlier, uh, just probably around noontime, that E.L. Harvey informed us that they are not collecting trash tomorrow because of the storm. So all of the trash and recyclables collection will be delayed one day this week. So no trash or recyclable collection tomorrow. So it'll be Tuesdays is Wednesdays, and Wednesdays is Thursdays, Thursdays is Friday, and Fridays is Saturday. And that is usually always the case. It's not that Tuesday will be picked up on Wednesday, and Wednesday will be picked up on Wednesday the rest of the week. Once it's off, just like a holiday, everything gets pushed back one day, correct? That's correct, because it takes E.L. Harvey two trucks to go through the entire town. Right. And if they were to do Tuesday on Wednesday and Wednesday on Wednesday, then they've got to put four trucks out there, and they just right. don't have that that equipment or manpower to do that. Exactly. And uh, this week here is just trash only week, so uh, you know, just one barrel, which is fine. You can uh, put it out there tomorrow or, or th well, on Wednesday. So we should be all done by uh, uh, Thursday on this here. Um, as far as the schools go, the the DPW doesn't do the schools. They do the school contract their own. Uh, that's not correct. The, D, the DPW contracts with plow contractors who do the schools uh, with plowing the, the parking lots, the roadways, and the salting. Okay, I think the so school department does their own sidewalks and access ways. Okay. Yeah. All right. So th that's right. So I mean, because you, we have contractors that do the town roads as well. You know. So, it, but it just happens to be contractors doing the schools that's correct okay right. and those contractors are contracted by the dpw right because a lot of a lot of people feel that the school is part of their budget to take care of their own property and so forth and and the way they do it no nope. okay nope. that comes out of the dpw's snow and ice uh removal budget this is why we get you out here you know get rid of all these myths yeah so <laughs> what we'll do is we'll plow those just like we would the roads but if we get uh you know, if we get a foot or more of snow, then it's really going to impact the parking areas. So what we'll have to do, Mike will coordinate with his team to do snow removal operations. And we do that from the downtown, we do that from public buildings, and we do it from all the schools. So once that piles up and starts to uh, pinch in the areas, the parking areas, we'll go out sometime later this week, we'll go out very early in the morning, and we'll collect all that snow and we'll, we'll remove it put it down on cedar street all right so it looks like something like uh like this kind of operation here there you yeah. have uh that's that's uh, i believe the front of the high school there yeah absolutely right and yeah, that's early morning if i remember correctly that was uh yeah that was well that, that was an evening process i want to say that was a late night well not an early morning but uh yes the snow just doesn't disappear from downtown, you know, you're able to pile it up in, in strategic points, um, and then you pick it up later. As at the same time, you clean up all the windrows from the sidewalks, so you can make it so the cars can park, and you can still have travel on both sides. And it seems like uh, like it never snowed, right? Because you know, when you have the windrows, the roads get narrower. Yeah, they get narrower, and then for the downtown businesses, if a car pulls up and somebody wants to get out of the passenger side, that door is parked right up against the windrow, so they can't even oh, open the door. Right. Um, a few years ago, we were very fortunate to get a loader-mounted snowblower. So this is a snowblower that's as wide as the front end of a loader, uh, and it's probably five feet tall, and that will take snow, take all those windrows downtown, and shoot it right into the back of those big trucks. So it, makes the cleanup process very, very much more efficient. Oh yeah, definitely more efficient. You can trucks move, you don't have uh, more trucks in lineup because you're filling the trucks faster. You're not spending a lot of time with the smaller loaders or the uh, skid steers, pushing things in a big pile for the one loader to load the trucks. Right. Um, and that also saves you in room. And it's also, even though you're doing things late night, early in the morning, it also saves you, uh, uh, tying up traffic 
you know, you're able to move a lot easier because, you know, the thing moves right along and the truck's right in front of it and it just fills it right up. It's, it's, it's great. I, I hope some people get a chance to witness uh, the snow removal operation. It is quite a sight and you got to understand the years and years of experience with all of our DPW employees that do this. It, they just, it's like they're taking a wand as they do disappear. They make it look that easy. Mike, you sound like you're speaking uh, very nostalgically. We always have room for another plow <laughs> operator if you're ever interested in coming back. I tell you, it was sad the first day that I had to stop plowing. When I got the job at Ashland Fire, I couldn't commit myself to the plow because I used to plow. My last job was uh, the middle school and high school. And <laughs> my first time on the desk with the snow stuff, I said, oh, I miss it out there. I wish I was out there plowing. And then about an hour later, the snow went from going down to left and right. <laughs> and it was like, wow, it's a lot nicer in here than out there. And after that, I, I don't miss it anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, just, not, it's not an easy process. So we have, uh, we're very fortunate that we have a very dedicated team and we have contractors that we can rely on. These folks, they're out there in the worst of conditions. And they're away from their families and they're tired, but right. they're doing what they love to do. They love to serve the community. So. You know, that's what keeps them going. That and a lot of caffeine. Uh, right. But that's what keeps them going because they, they just love to serve. Well, that's that's why I'm, I'm so passionate about it because I was part of that team. I see that still going on. And I'm also proud of this town on, you know, you know when you come into town from a different road during a storm and after a storm, you can see the difference in the roads. And it's, it's just amazing. It, it, it's like... You know, the person who does East Main Street, he wants that road to look better than the guy who does West Main Street. So you get that little competition. Everyone just tries to do their best, make it look their best. And that means your phone's not ringing after a storm. Hey, you know, how come my road's not plowed or whatever? You know, you because you have the, the right team members there. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we strive for uh, black pavement as soon as the last snowflake falls. Uh, like you said, there is a competition internally, but we're all one team. We're all one team serving the community. Right. Now, also, you also have to take care of sidewalks. Yeah. You know, what, kind of, what kind of mission is that like now that we, especially they've added all those uh, sidewalks on the east side of town. What, 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 what's that like these days? You yeah. have extra equipment for that now? So we, uh, we were very fortunate in that uh, two years ago, we received a third sidewalk machine. Um, but you have to picture... We're out there fighting the storm and every one of our plow operators has a route that they have to cover. Uh, and then at the end of that route, we've got three operators for our three sidewalk machines that have to then get into a sidewalk snowblower yep. and drive uh, 17 miles of sidewalk. So not only are they fatigued from 5.30 this morning through the last snowflake, but then they've got to get in these machines and they've got to clear the sidewalks. Uh, so you talk about dedication uh, to the community, but, you know, that's that's equally important because we've got folks that love to run on the sidewalks, folks that are walking uh, to and from school, and we want to make sure that that's safe for, for everybody. That's awesome. I tell you, what a nice job they do there. Um, so the, the, and again, I want to talk about the, uh, how everyone takes pride. And I love this photo here. Uh, this here I got off your Twitter as well. Um, I believe that's Jamie Stewart there on East Main Street. And, you know, first off, that's a massive plow. What's that, a 12-footer, 14-footer on the front? And uh, then probably a 14-footer, and then it's got the wing on the side. Then it's got the wing on the side. So basically, one guy is driving two plows. Correct. Um, it, it's. Yep, you're right. I tell you, I in myself, and I know that that when when I was plowing, they one guy would be in that truck doing that, and other towns would have two guys, one running the wing, and one. It's like, what's the point? And our guys were just so so talented, the way they could run that. And I know it's tough from a truck because I did it on the loader. We had the loader with the wing that I used to go and open up the snow dump after I was done with my route. And that was tough running that, but you could see it. It was so it made it real easy. I couldn't imagine doing it from a truck. So when you see these trucks coming at you, 
get off, get out of their way a little bit. Don't try to stay in the middle of the road. Let them, because <laughs> they're trying to clear off as much road as possible. Yeah, you make a great point there again, Mike. Uh, the, it's, we've got very talented and skilled professional operators here with the town of Hopkinton, uh, but it takes a little more extra just to be able to drive those large plows with the wings on them because that's sticking out beyond your truck where you can see. So you've got to know where the curb is. You've got to know where mailboxes are. Uh, and it, I appreciate you saying the fact that when you see these plows coming down the road, respect their space, give them space because it's a large, heavy piece of equipment. It's got a lot of momentum behind it. And it's very hard to stop it very quickly or maneuver it very quickly. So please respect them. Don't try to cut in front of them. Don't try to get into your driveway quicker than they can come along. Just, just respect their space and we'll all, we'll all make it through the storm safely. That, well, that's it. You're, you're absolutely right. It's it's about the respect. And, you know, and, and it's it's just, I want to say common sense safety, you know, you don't have to ride right up behind them. You know, that's the worst thing in the world because someone's going to, uh, they're going to have to stop fast for some reason and you're not going to have enough time to stop. Uh, but yes, you got to give them, got to give them their room, let them get those roads clean. And I, I, I guess the best message that you can give is just stay off the roads if you don't have to be on them. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of people have obligations that they have to meet. They've got to get to work. There may be emergencies. Um, but if, if you can stay off the roads, that's the preferred method is to stay off the roads until after the storm. Uh, it's not worth risking your life or your vehicle or personal property to get out there. Just wait, be patient. Um, everybody still goes to the grocery store to get their bread and milk before the storm. I don't know who's making that. sandwiches and drinking milk, but got to do know, that. Prepare for the storm. You know it's coming just like we do. So get what you need and then just be patient and uh, wait until the storm is behind us. All right. So now the storm is over. Everyone's, you know, taking the uh, plows off. They're fixing what's broken. They're uh, tuning up what got detuned <laughs> because it's it's not easy. I mean, it's cold weather. The manholes pop up or catch bases pop up from the uh, from the heaves or, or whatever. And uh, so you got to get it ready for the next one. But now the storms are all done. Everything's done. What are some of the other things that they do, you know, like clean out catch basins and drain ditches and whatever? What, what kind of stuff do they do now that the storm is over? So uh, one of the things to remember is that we're planning for not only the next storm. So we've got to make sure, like you said, everything's tuned up. The the plow blades, uh, the cutting edges are replaced. Uh, the salt shed is filled up, um, but we've got to plan for the removal of all the snow downtown and at the school. So that's that's a night that we've got to plan. Um, and then we've we've always got miscellaneous tasks that we're doing between storms, replacing signs, cleaning out catch basins to make sure that when all the snow melts, that it can find the catch basin to drain into. We're picking up tree branches. Uh, there's, there's a lot of miscellaneous things that are going on. And that's just on the highway side. On the water sewer side, we're still making sure that the water quality meets all standards and exceeds them, that the sewer is flowing. Uh, so there's, there's always things that we're doing on a daily basis to serve this community. Right, it, exactly. It, oh, wait, you're still picking up trash downtown. Uh, you, still, you still have your regular duties to yeah. do on, on top of it all, which which is nice that it gets done. All right, so now the snow's done, snow season's done, you put things away, back to normal. And then, uh, you know, because everyone knows Massachusetts only has two seasons, winter and construction. And this spring, what are we going to be facing this spring downtown? What's it going to look like? So I see the photo behind you is of the common. Yeah. Um, Amarello Construction, who is MassDOT's construction contractor for this project, the Main Street Corridor project, they are gearing up and getting ready to hit the streets. As soon as winter's behind us, they're gonna be out there. You'll notice that Eversource Gas is still out there now. Well, they're not out there now, but they were out there last week putting in a few of the last remaining uh, gas services and interconnections to side streets. Uh, but then Amarello Construction will move in. And it's their goal to get everything done between Ash Street past the common behind you in the picture, down to the intersection of 85 and 135. They want to get that all the way up to base course of pavement. 
So they're going to be installing the new drainage in there. They're going to be installing the new curbs. They're going to be taking out the old roadway, putting down the new roadway. They want to get all that done between, let's say it's March or maybe April 1st, once snow is behind us. From there, all the way down to 85, 135, they want to get all that done between March and November. Wow. Um, which will be a huge accomplishment. But what it will do is it'll help to compartmentalize where the disruption is going to be most, right? So all those businesses and the churches in the library and town hall, they'll only have to endure perhaps one season worth of construction. So folks can plan, all right, I've got to avoid that section of town or businesses can plan on getting notices out to their customers. Um, so that's what we're looking forward to in the spring. And then the following year, Amarillo Construction will focus between 85, 135 down to Wood Street. So those are the that's their that's their approach. Now, will that will uh, from so from Ash to uh, 85? Would that also include the underground utilities moving them underground? The, uh, uh, yes, yes, because that uh, there is a small piece there that will be the underground utilities. Wow. What a difference! Yeah, what yeah, it's going to be beautiful from essentially the common down to just beyond the fire department. And I was involved in another project in a community that I used to work in, in the town of Holden. And once all those overhead wires come down, it really beautifies oh, sure the does. skyline. It beautifies the, the, you know, in front of businesses and in front of homes and town hall really, really will be beautiful. Yeah. Every time I try to take a picture of town hall, take a nice photo of it for some project that we're working on and it took me two hours to Photoshop all the wires and pull out of it. And I can't wait not to have to do that anymore. <laughs> I'm also looking forward to um, the street lighting after that, you know, because I'm sure the, the poles are going to be beautiful. And I'm sure it's going to be something that probably matches that common already. Yeah. Um, so, so there'll be historic in nature, the, the poles yeah. that the lights are mounted on, the light fixtures themselves will be historic in nature. Uh, it's not going to be like if you look up overhead now, you see those those lights. It, they're they're going to be beautiful lights, and it's going to really, really clean it up. And then we've got sidewalks that'll be continuous. The area behind you again will have a will have a uh, a sidewalk along it. Yep. Uh, we'll have the bike path. Um, so you know this this really it, it's really going to transform the downtown, the Main Street corridor. All right, and I got a question uh, that came in. It says, "Will the work?" go on day and night through March and November? So there's there's no proposal at this point for night work. There may come a time when, for example, remember a few years ago, we did the water main replacement that went from Wood Street to uh, Hayden Row? Hayden Row, yes. All along Main Street. We had to go night work as we went through the 85-135 intersection just because we didn't want to disturb the traffic so much. So there might be a couple of instances where that's got to occur at night. Yeah. That's going to be approved by the select board first, uh, but it's it's really the contractor's goal to get all the work done during the daytime because the nighttime work is so much more expensive and it's it's a lot more dangerous for the oh, folks that are working. Absolutely, yeah, it is. It is more dangerous and it is so much. Uh, you know, when you're doing time and a half and double time on a on a uh, municipal rate, it's it's brutal. Yeah. But uh, John, I really, really appreciate you taking the time. And I, I'm so glad too, because if if I'm sure if the snow was getting any worse, I'm sure I might have got a cancellation from you. You should be busy. <laughs> but thank you for uh, sharing the information and help us get rid of some of the myths about um, how the snow goes away and how much it costs and all that stuff. You did a great job and, and uh, you know, give our best to, to your team down there. We love the DPW and all the work that they do. Um, and we'll get you on again next month for another update. It's great to hear, Mike. And I love this opportunity to be able to dispel, as you said, to be able to dispel any myths that are out there, to just let folks know what we do on a daily basis. We love serving this community. And again, my thanks to the dedicated staff that we have here that's out every day, whether it's fighting a storm or collecting trash or ensuring that we have great water. So Fantastic. Thanks thank again. Thank you very much. We'll see you.